All men aren't trash, but sometimes it's understandable why women feel that way. After the Me Too movement went viral in 2017, it seemed like there would be a major shift in our culture when it comes to sexual harassment and abuse, but it's still a recurring issue. I'm Shamika Sanders, and here with me are my co-hosts, Kiara Kelly and Africa Miranda. Put your phone on Do Not Disturb and get ready to hit up our comments section. Listen to Black Women Starts Now. If you go to MadameNoir.com, which you should be doing daily, and search sexual harassment, you'll find headlines such as, Torrey responds to sexual harassment allegations. And of course, there's the entire R. Kelly saga. With so many incidents and so few consequences, it's clear that this issue is pervasive. All of which leads us to our question of the week, should we expect men in power to be trash? Honestly, when I saw the question this week, I kind of, I, not to say I didn't like the, the title, but I didn't want women to feel like they should like walk out into the workplace and this should be their expectation. But then I had to take a look at my own life and I was a victim of sexual harassment at work. Oh my God. And oh, it was honestly a really crazy situation. I worked at the front desk of this office and I was a vice president of the company. And you know, there were inappropriate comments and it like escalated to where I physically felt unsafe. And that's really the issue with sexual harassment. It's such a power play. You know, you, women are usually in positions at jobs where you're not, you know, the equal, you're not the head of the corporation. Mm -hmm. And you're just in a position where someone is exerting their power and their influence and you're just kind of left feeling like scared and powerless. That's so brave of you to talk about that because clearly this is something that mm -hmm. happens to a lot of black women, but we're not very vocal about it. But for good reason, because at your job locations, there can be consequences. Exactly. And I just have to break this down for you because I I found this statistic really crazy. So according to the National Women's Law Center, it reports that black women are most likely to get sexually harassed at work, among other populations. And black women file claims at three times the rate of white women. And so obviously this is happening to us at disproportionate rates. And as Malcolm X said, <laughs> the most disrespected woman in America is the black woman. So of course, a lot of these things are weighing on us because we've achieved higher education. A lot of times we're the only person in our office and just being the only one alone makes you subject to discrimination. On top of that, and white men do this to us too, but if we have black men in the office, we are conditioned to protect black men. And I know in my own situation where I felt like I was sexually harassed, I started thinking about this man's family. I was like, oh my God, if he loses his job, his kids ain't gonna eat, his wife's gonna be upset. So I actually protected him more than I protected my own space and body. And that's what a lot of us do. And unfortunately, we've been conditioned to do that. Yeah, it brings me right back to this R. Kelly situation. So many times the victim who tries to speak out and when they do speak out, they're labeled as liars or it's a whole tirade against them is victim shaming. A lot of people didn't want to give up his music because they were just like protect the black man at all costs, even if it was detrimental to black women. And I hate to hear that happen to you and that that was your first thought. Not that he shouldn't, like he should have been thinking about his family. He should have been thinking about his career. Not you who's being harassed, being taken advantage of, you know, in these situations but yet you are still worried about protecting him. Like, where was his protection for you? Mm. The power dynamic is what drives this. And a lot of times these men are counting on the fact that we think about them so much. Um, but let's get into the social media streets and see what everyone else is saying. Ms. Cashy wrote on Twitter, black men are more offended by the hashtag men are trash than by the violence and abuse and death of black women at the hands of black men. Woo, Ms. Cashy, but preach. Yeah. Preach. It's similar to when um, white people are more triggered about being called a racist than they are about undoing systems of racism. Mm. It's like, okay, too much focus on the name calling, not enough about destroying what's causing these people to be treated this way. Moshi Mish wrote on Twitter, our society is racist and patriarchal. At the bottom of the food chain is a black woman. <laughs> men are trash is a stance against all that oppresses them. This is not us being like, oh, men are trash, we hate you. It's like, hey, men, please stop oppressing us. It's the system exactly. of it all and the people who participate in the system yep. more than it is every single man on this planet. Exactly, they bought into the power, they bought into like the negative behavior that's associated with that power. And you know, women have been the victims of it. Absolutely. Let's get into the polls, Kiara. Yes, as always, we took to our MadameNoir.com audience to find out what you think about this topic. We asked, have you ever been harassed or witnessed sexual harassment by a man in a position of power? With 50% of you saying yes and 50% saying no. I mean, I definitely have. And one thing that was interesting when we were having discussions about this is, Shamika, you said that you didn't even realize that you had been the victim of such treatment before. Well, yeah, I mean, I think 
I just didn't know what to identify it as. So I'm like thankful that you guys shared your experience because now it just gives women a way to be like, okay, I res that resonated with me. Right. So that is sexual harassment. Because I think for so long, we suppress it and we just put it to the back of our mind as normal exactly. when it's not normal. We asked, do you feel like you have less protection from harassment as a black woman with 75% of you saying yes and 25% saying no? I feel like as women, period, especially being a black woman, you are just unprotected. I think, no, no actually, I know nobody believes this. I mean, how many times do we have to beat at the door of oppression for somebody to open up and be like, I hear you. <laughs> Absolutely. I think about R. Kelly's victims. As soon as the surviving doc came out, people were just like, oh, well, they shouldn't have been there. They right. wanted it. Uh, Africa, in your experience, what happened when you told? Well, when I finally, you know, it got to the point where it just got so overt, when I did go to, like, the head of the company, I was, like, totally gaslighting me. Like, they kept telling me that, you know, he's the vice president, he's such a nice man, and he's married. You know, why would he say those things to you? And are you sure that's what he said? And and it's just, as you, when it happens, you can't believe it, because you always tell yourself, like, oh, if this happens to me, I'm going to say something right away. I didn't say something right away, because, again, you're weighing all these options. I needed that job. I was, like, in New York, broke. Like, I needed that job and then you know to sit in a room with the president of the company the vice president the, another head of a department and you're just sitting there like the girl that works the front desk and saying what happened to you and these people are basically like telling you that you're imagining it and you don't really have you know anybody to vouch for you it was like it was a very challenging situation like, it wasn't until I threatened legal action that you know it stopped but if I'm being honest like he never got fired wow. I still had to go to work for the next few months and see him especially with being a black woman they over sexualize us in the first place right. so they don't believe you from the jump they don't even want to hear it they don't, I don't even think they care they're like well you know or you probably were doing something to encourage yes what, what were you doing in that what were you wearing in that situation yeah. so. or it's even the slavery mentality of expecting your body to look and be accessible to them at any time mm -hmm. anywhere any place you, they don't give you any autonomy to stand and say no no yeah. Because they kept using the example that he had a family and, you know, and wife and kids. And I'm thinking to myself, well, I'm someone's daughter. Right. Yeah. Like, does that not matter? You know, yeah. I have a family. I'm yeah. valued. But in that situation, like, you realize, like, exactly how little value you have and mm -hmm. power you have. Power. And that's really the issue with, like, work in this country. And not even just this country, but our culture. Yeah. Is that until, like, this balance of power is more equal, we have no recourse. Mm -hmm. And that's what's so scary. Well, in the interim, we have to find ways to exercise the little bit of power that we have. And some of the things that you can do that is by paying attention to any boundaries that you may have. And you know, some of these you just, you just learn in practice. Like, you know, I don't like how he said that. I don't like how it felt. Exactly. And you just make a mental note of that. And if it keeps happening again, it's probably something you need to speak up about. And also, one thing that was for me that kept me silent and gagged is I just worried about intent so much. Like, he didn't mean that, or I'm so worried about getting him in trouble. Intent does not matter. If he thought putting a hand on your knee was innocent, he needs to learn it's not innocent. He needs to learn that he needs to have consent to touch you or talk to you in any which way. And we really just have to do a good job of speaking up, reinforcing our boundaries, and not letting people get away with treating us however they want. Another insightful conversation. Thank you, ladies. Make sure you head over to Hello Beautiful and MadamNoir.com for more conversations on this. We're always pushing the envelope and making sure your voice is heard. Until next time, guys, stay blessed and listen to Black Women.